Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be doing a beginner's guide for Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. These tips and tricks here should maximize your chances of winning this battle royale style shooter. It's a very difficult game to play. Even the best players in the world aren't going to win every time. Uh, if you're playing solo, you have to be the best of 100 different players that join the game. If you're playing with duos, you have to be the best of 50 teams. And if you're playing with four man squads, you have to be the best of 25 different teams. The odds are always stacked against you. And the best we can really do is try and maximize your chances of getting to that end game. The very first tips I have for you guys are things that you can do before even getting into a game. First thing on the list is going into your graphics settings and taking your foliage setting and setting that to low. Unfortunately, this isn't going to make the game look as pretty as it does when it's on high or ultra, but considering the foliage renders thick grass or bushes that you normally wouldn't see, it's actually a huge advantage to set this to low instead of high. When I first started playing, I thought I was laying down in some thick grass and nobody could see me, when in fact on the other player's screen, I'm just laying down on the side of a naked hilltop. So it's kind of comical, but also a huge disadvantage, so make sure you set this to low. Now the next tip I wanna cover is one of the first and most important decisions you're gonna make in every map, and that is where to bail out of your airplane. There's a lot of different things that should affect this decision. If you bail towards the outskirts of the island, you might be less contested when you have to try and loot buildings and find good gear. You may not run into as many players. However, statistically, you're more likely going to need to do a lot of traveling towards the beginning of the game, which means traveling over large open areas. This is certainly doable, but the more you have to travel in big open areas and the less time you have to sort of survey your surroundings and try and move tactically, the higher the chances of you getting ganked by somebody camping in a bush or behind a tree are going to be. So basically, the more traveling you have to do or that you're forced to do because of the encroaching circle, the higher your chances of dying. Now, if you commandeer a vehicle, sometimes you can sort of zoom to the center of the circle and find a good building to hide out in or something like that but uh, that is assuming that you can find a vehicle. Now, there's this cool little map that ShatterNL made. Um, he posted it on Reddit and a few other areas like Steam uh, to help players figure out where the loot is and the vehicles are on this map. And this can help out with figuring out your strategies and where to jump. If you wanna go to an extremity of the map, you'll probably wanna pick an area that has a pretty high chance of finding a vehicle so that you can move around quicker. Vehicles are very valuable. In fact, if you are parachuting down and you see a vehicle on the road, it might be worthwhile to divert your drop so that you get the vehicle instead of going to your loot spot because then you can use that vehicle to drive out to further extremities of the map that other players can't get to, and then you can loot it all uncontested. Now, when you physically bail out of the airplane, sometimes if you're bailing over a target that you're right above, you can aim straight down. This will allow you to plummet towards the earth even faster, around 230 kilometers an hour. And if you're actually going at this maximum speed, you will fly a little bit past your parachute opening point, and this will allow you to open it at a lower altitude, allowing you to get on the ground before a lot of the other players unless they're using the same technique. This can be very useful if you're just going straight down for some highly contested loot and you want to be the first person there. Now once you land on the ground you get your barons, you fight anybody that landed right next to you and then you start looting items. It's important to understand your loot, what gear you're picking up and kind of how it all works because looting quickly is a big part of this game. You have to know what you need or what you're going to try and collect that round so you can do it as quickly as possible and move on to the next area. Understanding capacity and what increases your capacity is important. That's how much gear you can hold. Picking up a level one backpack increases your capacity by 150. Uh, a level two increases it by 200 and level three increases it by 250. Furthermore, if you actually pick up some torso armor, that will increase your capacity by another 50. Regardless of whether it's level one, two, or three armor, you'll get 50 bonus capacity. Now picking up armor and helmets is going to be very useful. Level one gear is not bad by any means and you should absolutely pick it up right at the start if it's all you have available. Obviously the higher level gear is better but it's not going to necessarily make or break a firefight. The different levels of armor mitigate the same amount of damage 
damage, just level three has more durability than level one. If you end up killing your opponent and they have some damaged level three armor on them, chances are that level three armor is gonna be worse than some brand new level one armor. So just look at the armor level points available and that'll pretty much dictate which armor you should pick up. Almost always damaged armor is gonna be worse than brand new armor. Now when it comes to helmets, these can prevent you from getting one shot killed by headshots. They'll actually provide physical armor protection if you get shot in the head. However, if you get shot in the face with a level one or two helmet, it's not gonna mitigate any of that damage. If you get the level three helmet though, it does have a face protector and that will stop one shot headshots, um, especially from the SKS or the Car 98, which can be very lethal at range. Now say you've got a bit of a feel for the game, you're better at surviving for longer periods of time and winning firefights, chances are you're gonna be taking a bit of damage during firefights or maybe you'll get stuck in the circle for a bit of time and you'll take some serious damage and need to heal up. Understanding the difference between med kits, energy drinks, painkillers, first aid kits is important as these can all be used in conjunction and for different purposes. Bandages are the most common. They'll heal a small amount of your HP. You can use multiple of them and you can heal up to 75% of your health. First aid kits work in the same way, except they'll instantly heal you to 75% of your health. And by instantly, I mean during the duration it takes to apply your first aid kit. Med kits will heal you all the way up to 100% of your health, but these are much harder to come by. Energy drinks, painkillers, and the rare adrenaline syringes heal you over time and they can heal you beyond that 75% as well. The difference between energy drinks and say painkillers are that you can consume an energy drink faster. Um, the effects don't last as long. Painkillers, they take longer to consume, but the effects last longer. If you take two of these at a time, they can either be two painkillers or two energy drinks or mix and match. You will also get a speed boost and this will help you sort of outrun circles sometimes if you're in the damaging area. Um, also hitting X will holster your weapon and you can run a little bit faster while you're not carrying a gun. Using these items has absolutely saved my ass and allowed me to survive being in the circle for extended periods of time. Now, since we're talking about the circle, we may as well talk about circle awareness. This is one of the leading causes of death in Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. I still die to it sometimes now. Um, it is a very difficult mechanic to wrestle with, especially early in the game when you're learning, as you'll get caught up in exploring the world, looting buildings, and you'll forget that the circle is encroaching on you, and sometimes you'll get caught in it, and there's not a lot you can do. It's the ultimate newbie killer, and occasionally it will certainly take down an experienced player, as can often often happen when you're caught up in the middle of a firefight or you're out running the circle. You'll see other players out running that circle. You'll start to shoot at each other. You'll damage each other. Then the circle will get to you and end up killing both parties. So it can be a brutal mechanic to deal with and checking your map frequently and constantly helps you determine where the next circle is going to be. And also looking at your mini map in the lower right hand corner will show you how much time you have before the circle starts to encroach. Let's talk about some of the controls that can help your gameplay. The first First and foremost is that using your camera to look around you while you're running uh, is incredibly important. You can do this by holding the alt key and then moving your mouse to orient your camera in a different direction. This is very helpful for checking behind you while you're in a full out sprint across a field or just looking left and right. It can also be a very useful tool for looking around you without moving your player model. So if you're prone in a sniper position and you think there's like a guy behind a tree but you don't want to move your player model in order to get seen by other players, you can hold alt and look around you without moving your player. A very, very useful tool. When you kill an enemy and you go over to loot them, it can be very helpful to keep your player moving while you're looting. If you're out in an open field and you don't want to be an easy sniper target, you can kind of shuffle back and forth as long as you stay close enough to the loot box. This can make you a hard target. Right clicking on items in the loot box rather than dragging and dropping is a quicker way to get them to your inventory. And in the same line of thought, right clicking on items in your inventory will automatically apply weapon attachments to your weapon or activate heals. So you don't have to drag and drop really in this game. Right clicking is a quick and efficient way of doing things. Make sure you check out the key binding list in the game. There's a lot of hotkeys that will help you uh, get access to your items without having to go to your inventory. You can activate a lot of your heal kits by just simply using some of the number 
number keys. Pressing five will cycle through your different types of grenades. And once you start to throw a grenade, once you see that red arch, that means the grenade is already cooking. So if it's a frag grenade, you better throw that thing before it blows up in your own hand. Now, when it comes to weapons, weapon attachments, and gear, this can certainly give you a huge advantage in a firefight. It's not necessary to win a game. I've won games with some level one gear and some relatively crappy weapon attachments, but it certainly does help out. One of my most coveted weapon attachments in the game is the ACOG four times optic, as this allows you to engage players at further ranges. It's great for assault rifles. You can use it on SKS, even a sniper rifle if you need to. It's just a great optic. And since so much of this game is gonna be about medium to long range firefights, having a magnified optic is very, very important. Now, obviously shotguns are great in close quarters, but so are fully automatic assault rifles. The AKM is one of the better close range assault rifles. And then the other ones that use 5.56 ammo are usually better at range. People seem to think the M16A4 is one of the best ranged assault rifles, and it certainly is. Again, another one of the most coveted items, but a very rare item is the suppressor for the assault rifle. This can totally mask your location when getting into firefights, and it's one of the best things to keep yourself hidden and alive. If you can find one of these, then you're in a very good place, but uh, if not, don't worry about it, as most players probably won't have them. Sidearms, for the most part, are really only good in the early game when players are still picking up weapons. They can be a good way to kill your first opponent who maybe doesn't have a gun yet or you just snuck up on them. But as soon as you can get anything beyond a pistol, switch to that and use that instead of your sidearm and just keep the handgun as backup or whatever. You're not taking up capacity of your player by having a weapon equipped, only if it's in your inventory. If you decide that you're not going to be using your pistol anymore, drop that 9mm ammo that you might be carrying for it. Or uh, same goes for like a shotgun or something like that. If you decide you're not going to be using shotguns anymore, drop the ammo, free up some of your uh, backpack capacity. Anyway, that pretty much wraps it up for this beginner's guide to player unknowns battlegrounds. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope it helps you get into the game with a few less headaches. This can be a very frustrating game. It still is for me right now. I'll often get into the game and die right away sometimes, but that is just the nature of this game. So try not to get frustrated with it. Enjoy the heart pounding and fun action packed moments that it can deliver. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.